Eddie. Uh, Eddie and the Wolf. I've got a last name that everyone mispronounces, so I'm going to now butcher it. Fra Fraudener? Fraudener, exactly. Fraudener. At the very end of making schnitz, I'm going to tell you what it means. Since I've got a real live Austrian here, I'm going to take you back to the homeland. You're going to show us the classic schnitzel. Super simple. You want the best pork you can get. Uh, this is a pork loin. Could mm -hmm. be chicken. The very like authentic Wiener schnitzel is veal. And you've trimmed the fat cap and everything off of that This line. is fully trimmed, no silver skin, no chain. We use all this for basically like uh, either ground beef, a terrine. I believe in like the, the, the zero waste restaurant, so mm -hmm. I can like try to use every single part of the animal because that's what, what European cooking is about. Like this whole like term nose to tail has been practiced in Europe for centuries. I love working clean, so like, like using those Ziploc bags to give us a little easier time pounding the schnitzel. Two sides of the meat pounder. The serrated one like destroys and like softens the meat tissue. With the flap one, you have a bit more control of like how thin you want to really go on the thickness of the veal. The nice way about this is, I think everybody wants to eat more healthy and everybody wants to eat more consciously. This way, you feel like having a, a full meal, but you get away with like with six, seven ounces of, of meat. Like you actually feel good afterwards. You know when you go to a steakhouse and like you you leave it and you're like you know, you're like so full and you feel like basically like uh, like run over by a truck. That's what schnitzel is not. Mm -hmm. For the breading process, we basically need flour, eggs, and breadcrumbs. Whisk the egg yolks just a little bit. In the meantime, I'm gonna season the schnitzel. Just salt and pepper on one hand side. Drop it in. Ba bam. Salt and pepper on the other hand side. So, like, how do you keep your hands clean in the breading process? Very important. Basically, you could do one step with your left hand, the other step mm -hmm. with your right hand. So you don't get flour mitt. And then you try to, to fry your fingers and like see how long it takes. I actually like when the egg has some like viscosity to it, mm -hmm. because then it's gonna give you like a thicker coating on the egg. You can slightly put some pressure on it. Now we've got our oil. What kind of oil do you use in here? Any oil which can take high heat. Yeah. In old days, you never had a thermometer. I'll show you the grandmother's test then it doesn't foam up as vigorously. Yeah. This means it's too cold. Gotta let it come up just a little bit. So you said that was your grandmother's test. Is this something you ate a lot growing up? Oh, absolutely. This was like a Sunday meal. Mm -hmm. Because it was easy to prepare for like a bigger family. So who is the master of like cooking it in your family? My dad, definitely, definitely. If you're getting up there, 370. When you put it in, always put it away from you. Mm -hmm. Don't put it to you. And now the key is we're gonna shake it. Just so it doesn't adhere to the bottom? Yeah, more vigorously. Go be. Be heavy, be heavy, go heavy. Not too heavy. Whoa! You said heavy. We're gonna turn it once, one second. Your dad would be a so And now, and now go right for now. it, go for it. You see this? This is perfect. When it forms across here, this is perfect. Look at this, how it souffles. It's like a, like a soccer ball. It's actually cooked by its own juice and not by the oil. This is perfection. Mm -hmm. This is absolute perfection. Are we ready to plate? Yeah, let's go ahead and plate that one. The traditional um, side dishes for the schnitzel it's basically potato salad. Lingonberry, please. I have a Norwegian side of my family. Lingonberries is what we had growing up like at Christmas. Oh, it's great. It's also like, I call it the, the Austrian ketchup because it's like, it's sweet, it's sour. Mm -hmm. The saltiness comes from the schnitzel. Anything fried needs something acidic to cut through. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna marinate the salad just a little bit. This is olive oil. And then you have the honor. Just make it sexy. This is actually perfect. And then you have a fresh wedge of lemon on top, and this is your first fully puffed schnitzel. It's a beauty. That is a thing of beauty. Do you want to eat it? It's a beauty. Let's let's go for yeah, it. Yeah, let's actually eat it. Because didn't your dad say that like you got to get it right out of the pan? Like you don't want to wait. You have 60 seconds to serve this. We are still like 10 seconds away, so dig in. All right, I'm gonna get right in here. And wait a sec. This is the most important part. Get that lemon. And like the ideal is to have cucumber, potato, etc., all in one bite. And you see how, how wonderful that crust comes off the mm -hmm. meat? It's like, it's delicious. Because then you get the balance of everything because you've got like the tartness mm. of the lingonberry, like this cuts through. Do. The creaminess of those potatoes, that's really, really good. And mm. then that cucumber salad just adds that little bit. So what do you think? What do you think about like the schnitz? This is actually pretty light, like unexpectedly so when you're thinking of like frying pork. And then the acidity, it just brings it all up. Mm. And the freshness of the cucumber is huge. This is what good food is, I think, is like, good food is like life. It's all about balance. This is a meal where you basically, like, you leave a restaurant and you, like, like rub your belly and you say, mm, this was really, really good. But not like you've been hit by a truck because after you left the steak restaurant. Well, I can eat the schnitzel 
twice a week. That's the big difference. Okay, so what does the last part of your name mean? You said you're going to tell me after eight your schnitzel. Frau like... means woman. Yeah. And later means womanizer. But <laughs> Frau actually means woman as I'm not making this up. I'm so sorry. Which great grandparent got oh you God. that? Uh... I don't know. Now listen, like, you cannot do anything about your name or your family. Yeah. So it is what it is. Maybe I'm lucky to not know what Rapanich means. Maybe it means something <laughs> in Croatian that's not good. You never know. You never know. <laughs> well, thank you, Chef. This is outstanding. Thank you very much for coming to Eddie and the Wolf. To be with the hot chicken first. So our dredged hot chicken, nice and crunchy. We doubled with the ranch. Then some pickles. The brininess, the acidity plays really nice with the, um, just how kind of rich this dish is. I remember I got a front. This is a fatty sandwich. And then just the top, right on top. And there is our sandwich. That's a beautiful sandwich. I think you should just.